A team of scientists visited a new thermal region near Turn Lake to take gas samples and measure temperatures. The results of their work provide a picture of how the thermal regions in Yellowstone developed. Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles is a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution comes from Sarah Peake, a geochemist with the U.S. Geological Survey. Thermal areas, where heat from Yellowstone's magmatic system meets the Earth's surface, are part of Yellowstone's dynamic landscape. Some of these thermal areas are old and cooling, such as the Brimstone Basin on the southeastern edge of Yellowstone Lake, but others are quite young and robust, such as the new thermal areas near Turn Lake. This thermal region was first identified using satellite thermal data, and its evolution can be seen in aerial photos and satellite imagery. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists made initial visits to the newly discovered thermal area in 2019, identifying zones of dead trees and hot fields, but also noting vegetation regrowth in some areas. The team also noted steam coming out of the ground across thermal areas and areas of surface sulfur deposition, so follow-up expeditions are planned to characterize the gas emissions. There were two objectives for this visit measuring the total amount of volcanic gas released from the thermal area, and determining the composition of the gas. To measure the amount of gas, a backpack-sized device called a CO2 flux meter is brought to the field area. A small open bottom chamber with a mixing fan, connected to a flux meter, is placed on the ground. Flux meters measure CO2 accumulation indoors. This shows the CO2 emissions from that space footprint, which is less than 0.1 square meters, about one square foot. This is extended to the entire thermal area by taking measurements at predefined GPS points covering the area. To reach a distance of 15 meters, 49 feet, that means a total of about 200 measurements. Then, the total emissions are estimated by interpolating the measured points. The total CO2 emission level from this new thermal area is approximately 12.4 metric tons of CO2 per day. By area, this amount is equivalent to the nearby and chemically similar Mud Mountain Thermal Region and represents only a small fraction of Yellowstone's total sulfuric acid thermal region emissions, which is about 24,000 metric tons of CO2 per day. Measurements of ground temperatures at each point confirmed that many locations in the core of the thermal region were at boiling temperatures, about 92 degrees Celsius, 198 degrees Fahrenheit, at that altitude. This high temperature is found just underground at a depth of 20 centimeters, 8 in, and is the location with the highest CO2 emissions. This makes sense because gases, especially steam, carry heat from below the surface, thereby heating the ground as they move. The gas hides just below the surface. Sometimes, when the soil is pierced with a thermocouple to measure the temperature, gas emissions increase significantly. In contrast, in more mature thermal areas such as Mud Mountain, gas emissions tend to follow existing channels, resulting in fumaroles and other degassing features. Maps of soil CO2 concentration and temperature measured at a new thermal area near Turn Lake in Yellowstone National Park. A. Map of log soil CO2 flux simulated based on measurements made at the black dots in September 2022. B. Map of soil temperature at a depth of 20 cm 8 inches. Note that the area on the right-hand side of each map has bare of forest due to recent tree kill, but with minimal gas emissions, low temperatures, and small trees regrowing. 
This is a sign of initially diffuse gas and thermal emissions beginning to concentrate in the core of the thermal area. To understand the composition of the gas, samples were collected in glass bottles for analysis back in the lab. The largest component of gas emissions at Yellowstone is steam, water, and the remaining gas is primarily carbon dioxide, CO2, with minor additions of other gases, including hydrogen sulfide, H2S, methane, CH4, nitrogen, oxygen, and other trace gases. Compared to the nearby established Fern Lake thermal area, gas samples from the new thermal area contain more nitrogen and less H2S. The broad distribution of degassing in the new thermal area probably allows the incorporation of more air than in the Fern Lake thermal area. Notably, while the samples contain some oxygen, oxygen levels are considerably lower than in an equivalent amount of air.